Hi! Welcome to Art Adventures from the Walters Art Museum. My name is Elizabeth and today we are thinking about stories and storytelling in art. There are many different types of stories. Some stories are fictional, which means they come from someone's imagination. Other stories are nonfiction, which means that they're based on real life. And there's also legends, which are stories that have been passed down for many years, and while they may seem fantastic, they could be inspired by true events. What's your favorite story? In a museum, works of art can tell more than one story. Apart from the stories they show us, there's also the stories of the artists who made them, and the stories of how and why they ended up in a museum. Let's look at a work of art that shows more than one story. This piece is a bulla, a special type of jewelry usually worn as a necklace. It shows images of Icarus and Daedalus, two characters from ancient Greek legend. In the story, Daedalus is a brilliant inventor who has been imprisoned on an island with his son Icarus by an unjust king. In order to escape the island, Daedalus creates two sets of wings out of wax, feathers, and wood so that they can fly off of the island to freedom. Before they leave, Daedalus warns Icarus not to fly too high or the heat from the sun's rays will melt the wax and cause the wings to fall apart. They take off and Icarus obeys his father at first. He has so much fun flying that he decides to fly as high as he can and the hot sun melts the wax in his wings and he falls into the sea. Daedalus can't save him and has to fly on alone, heartbroken. Another story is the story of the object itself. This bulla is over 2,500 years old. So we don't have a lot of information about the artist who made it. However, we do know about the history and cultural practices of the people who would have owned it. This piece comes from Etruria, a region in Italy that was conquered by the Roman Empire. We know that bullae, it's a Latin word, so bullae means more than one bulla. Bullae were protective amulets given to baby boys when they were born for them to wear until they were about 13 years old, when they were considered adults. So imagine that you're a parent in Etruria and you have a brand new baby boy. Why do you think you would give him an amulet with an image of Icarus on it? I imagine that I would say to my baby, I can't control the world around us, so I hope this amulet protects you. I can't control your decisions, so I hope you listen to me and don't make foolish decisions like Icarus. But more than anything, I love you and I want you to be safe. Stories can help us connect to our imaginations, connect with history, and connect with each other. What is an object that you have that has a special story behind it? Have you ever given someone a gift that had a special meaning? Now, Emily is going to show us how we can use rocks and paint to make our own stories to remember and share with others. Hi everyone, Emily here. Thanks so much, Elizabeth, for all of that great information. Story stones are a great way to do a fun making activity outside that relies on collecting stones from a walk or a visit to a park. They're also an excellent way to tell a visual story. Before you even go looking for stones, it is important to think of a story that you would like to illustrate by painting different small pictures of parts of the story. Take your time thinking of a story. It can be one that you have heard before or one that you've just made up. Think back to the stories that we've heard earlier today. Will your story teach a lesson or have a symbolic meaning? For our video today, I'm going to tell a story that I made up about a worm who gets washed out to the sidewalk during the rain and has to make his way back home. A lesson about determination. The supplies you will need for this activity are acrylic paint or sharpies, paint brushes, five found stones, a paper towel, a water cup, and a pencil with an eraser. Once you have collected your five stones, you can start by drawing five different scenes or elements from your story onto the stones with your pencil. Next, 
use the acrylic paint or sharpies to color your drawings in. Just remember to mind your clothes or wear a paint smock. When you are finished painting your stones, let them dry and then arrange them so that they tell your story. My story goes like this. The worm is surprised by the sudden rain. It rains so hard that he is washed out of his garden home onto the sidewalk where he lands in a puddle. Then he begins his long journey home, over a log, under a car, and then he has to dodge a bluebird, but he doesn't give up. Finally, he makes it home to his garden and is reunited with his sweetie. The end. Once you've finished your story stones, snap a photo of them and send your photo to familyprograms at thewalters.org to have your artwork included in our online gallery. We would love to see them. Thanks for watching.